myself the way God sees me. I am highly favored of the Lord. I am crowned with glory and honor. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am reigning as a king in life. In Jesus' name, I decree by faith that I walk in divine favor. I have preferential treatment, supernatural increase, restoration, prominence. I have petitions granted, laws changed, policies and rules changed, and battles that I do not have to fight. The blessing and favor of God is on my life. Every morning when I arise, I will speak and expect divine favor. Doors are now open for me that men have said were impossible to open. No obstacle can stop me. No hindrances can delay me. I am honored by my Father to him. I'm the object of his affection. I'm the apple of his eye. I am blessed and highly favored in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Tuesday night, pastor made a statement, and that statement was, our body is God's home address. So we're going to confess some things that are in that area. Amen. My body is the temple of God. Greater is he who is in me than he that's in the world. The greater one has made me a success. I cannot fail. That same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in me. He lives in me. He quickens my mortal body. He vitalizes me. He energizes me. I am strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in my inner man by the Holy Spirit that lives in me. Amen. I fellowship with God. I commune with God. I talk with Him. And I listen to Him that I may carry out His will on the earth. I am the prophet of my own life with my words and God's word. It determines my future. Out of the abundance of my heart, my mouth speaks. My faith-filled words are alive and full of power. I am what the Word says I am. I can do what the Word says I can do. I can have what the Word says I can have. In Jesus' name. Come back. 
the magnify the name of the Lord, we want to invite everyone to corporately worship and praise with us today. This song says, open the eyes of our hearts, God. We want to see him, but we already know that we see him every day because he lives inside of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You can put your hands together right here. High and lifted up is what you are, Heavenly Father. And we love you. We honor you, Jesus.
know nothing else matters but the presence of the Holy Spirit. God, we want to see you. We thank you for seeing you. High and lifted up is what you are. And we glorify and magnify you, Jesus. And we lift your name on high. Hallelujah. In my life, Jesus, you be glorified. You get the glory. You get the praise. You get the honor. We just want to simply say thank you. Is there anybody that has a thank you in their spirit, on their hearts this morning? Begin to lift your hands and just tell God what you're thankful for. God, we thank you for grace. We thank you for mercy. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your goodness. Hallelujah. You get the glory, Lord. And we love you. We honor you, Lord. Be glorified. We bless your name, God. So in my life. Be glorified, be glorified in my life. Be glorified, be glorified. Everybody lift it up, say it. And you get the praise, and you take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. you get the glory, you get the praise, and you take the honor. I just want to say thank you. In my life, say, be glorified. Of my hands, Lord, I open up my heart to you. Say, in my life, be glorified, be glorified. You get the glory, you get the praise, and you take the honor. I just want to say thank you.
say thank you. visiting with us for the first time. Nobody? All right, well, let's give ourselves a hand for being here this morning. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, at this time, we would like to welcome Sister Shannon for our announcements. family and friends, I greet you with Jesus' joy and peace. ALCI Sunday evening prayer call is each Sunday evening at 8 p.m. All are invited to join Pastor Kirkpatrick as he shares an empowering message and offers prayers to empower us all. The prayer call is on your screen. Otherwise, check your emails or go to our website at edwardkirkpatrick.org for the call-in number. Also, on Sunday, November 7th, will be ALCI's Super Sunday. Pastor will be ministering at our 8 a.m. service, and our guest speaker for the 10 a.m. service will be Dr. Brian Mosley. We have an exciting addition to Super Sunday. An evening service at 6 p.m. has been added with guest choir Chris Irvin and Abraham's Descendants. Christopher Irvin is the director and founder of Abraham's Descendants Ministries, which includes a 45-member professional choir based out of Charlotte, North Carolina, and consisting of singers from North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, and Maryland. We are so excited to have them here at ALCI. Plan to join us for November 7th Super Sunday services at 8 and 10 a.m. and Sunday evening at 6 p.m. And then on November 8th, it will be Miracle Monday here at ALCI. Service will begin with the Healing School at 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. with Pastor Kirkpatrick, followed by an anointed message from Prophet Brian Mosley. So mark your calendars for November 7th, Super Sunday, and November 8th, Miracle Monday. ALCI's Phase 3 Greater Glory 12-month debt-free campaign is nearing the end of month 6. And with your continued consistency and fulfilling your pledges, we will finish strong. We will reach our goal of paying off the mortgage at 560 Farragut Street. Amen. If you have not yet joined us in this debt-free initiative, it is not too late. Our ushers have brochures available with details about the Phase 3 Greater Glory Debt-Free Campaign. You can also visit our website at edwardkirkpatrick.org slash phase three for further details. ALCI's Life After the Tithe financial stewardship classes will be starting soon. 
For those who have registered for the class, be sure to check your emails this week regarding the starting dates and times. If you have questions or concerns, please feel welcome to email info at edwardkirkpatrick.org or see Minister Delisha directly. Following the service, please be sure to stop by the bookstore to purchase the CD recording of today's message or go to edwardkirkpatrick.org product store to get the digital download. Additional ministry resources are available as well. ALCI family and friends, this is a reminder that this Wednesday, October 27th, is Pastor Kirkpatrick and Lady Kim Kirkpatrick's 20, 20th anniversary of marriage. We will have a special presentation for them during today's 10 a.m. worship service, so we invite you to join us. Thank you to every ALCI member and friend that has shown their love and honor by sewing their financial gifts and cards. If you haven't participated and desire to do so, it's not too late. You can still sow your financial seeds of love in a card of your choosing via the drop box in the back of the church or give via cash app at dollar sign life to the max, putting wedding anniversary in the four field or give online at edwardkirkpatrick.org using the wedding anniversary giving designation. If you are writing a check, please make it payable to Pastor and Lady Kim Kirkpatrick. Giving towards this celebration will remain open even after today's presentations. Pastor and Lady Kim, we are excited to celebrate and honor you. Congratulations. This concludes our highlighted announcements. How many know he's a man of his word? He can't lie. And we believe in him. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. All things are possible. Thank you. When we believe. are possible when we believe and all chains are breakable when we receive Yahweh you keep your promises yes you said believe in me. you said it and you said it we believe it yes Lord you're a man of your word Your man, your man of your word. word. If, if you, you said it, we believe it. Oh, 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 oh. If you said it, we believe it. It's your man, it's your man yeah. of your word. See, all things are possible when we believe, and all chains are breakable. Receive Yahweh, you keep your promise. Hey, you said it, I believe it. If you said it, if you said it, we believe it. Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah. If you said it, we believe it. It's your man, of your word. If you said it, what you started God you have never failed you won't start with me you're present in every step you're patient in every heartache God you have Thank you. 
for your word. Yeah. If you say we believe it, you're sure a man. You finished what you started. God, you have never failed. Jesus, whoa, if you said it, we believe it, cause you're a man, man of your word, of your if you word. said it, you said it we believe it. I put my whole heart in you, Jesus, oh, if you said it, we believe it, cause you're a man, you're a man yes, Lord, of if you said it, Jesus, speak in the cash in Lord, oh, our hands up in this moment right here and give God praise. Hallelujah. It's simple. It's just simple. It says, I am who you say I am. Can we sing that together? Yes, I am who you say I am. And 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 I am who you say I am. I'm healed, Lord. I am who you say I am. I can make it. Yes, I can. our hands up and give God praise right here give him the glory and he gets the honor hallelujah glory 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 if he said it I believe it if he said it I believe it how many of you believe what he said what he said about you what he said about your future you know the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie neither is he the son of man that he should repent whatever he says 
it's already done. Let, let me help you to understand, when God says something, it is not for the purposes of him doing something. He says something because he's already done something. And what he says is already done. Somebody says it's daytime. But if God said it's night, it is night. Although it may be day right now. Because the moment he says it. You remember what he said concerning Abraham. He says to Abraham when he was childless, no seed. He says, I have made thee. Not I will make you. Not I'm going to make you. He said, I have made thee a father of many nations. So that indicated that even though Abraham did not have a father, physical seed the moment God said I have made thee that meant Abraham was he was a father of multitudes even when he didn't have a child see what you gotta do is you gotta believe what he says about you he says you are blessed he says you are healed he says you are prosperous. He says you are the head and you're never again the tail. He says you are above only and you're never again beneath. If you believe what he says, then everything he said, you are. Hallelujah. So I don't wait until I have a clean bill of health from the doctor before I believe that I am the healed. See, I'm not the sick trying to get healed. I am the healed protecting my health from sickness and disease. Hallelujah. You are what he says you are. All you gotta do is act like it. Oh, you, you, you didn't hear what I said. I said all you have to do is act like it. Go ahead and start acting like the blessed. Start talking like the blessed. Start behaving like the blessed. Start praising like the blessed. Hallelujah. Can we give God a praise right now? Come on, let's give him a praise. Come on, let's give him a praise. My, 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 my. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. God be the glory for all the great things he has done. Let me just again thank you for your presence today. To those of you who are watching by way of social media, whether it be through Facebook or live stream, we again want to thank you for your viewing presence. I want to thank all of you for being in attendance. We're excited about the word of God today. How many of you are excited about the word? Amen. Amen. Just want to, again, reiterate and remind you about the upcoming services we have. Amen. Please do not, do not miss the upcoming Super Sunday. First Sunday in November and uh, it's going to be a Super Sunday. Sunday morning, 8, 10, and 6. 8, 10, and 6. But I guess speaker Dr. Brian Mosley, amen, and guest group, choir, uh, Chris Irvin and Abraham's descendants. Then Monday is Miracle Monday. Miracle Monday. I'm telling you, I'm expecting miracles. How many of you believe in God for miracles? Supernatural interventions of God. Miracle Monday, healing school, 630. I'll be leading the charge in that. 
sharing with you God's word concerning all manner of healing. And then, of course, Dr. Moser will be bringing an anointed message. Amen. Thereafter, so you don't want to miss it. Well, it is opportunity for prosperity time. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a praise. Let's give him a praise. Amen. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Psalms 115. Psalms 115. Psalms 115. Glory to God. Amen, 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 amen. Psalms 115. And uh, I want us to look at a verse of scripture here. Uh, let's begin. Let's look at verse number 14 here. In fact, let's start at verse 12. Psalms 115 and verse 12. Notice what the Bible says. The Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. Verse 14. The Lord shall increase you more and more. You and your children. Say out loud, the Lord is increasing me more and more. So notice the Bible says in verse 12 of this Psalms, he said, the Lord has been mindful of us. In other words, the Lord has you and me on his mind. And I want you to, I want you to zero in on what it is that he's thinking of you and me. What, what, what is it that God has on his mind concerning us? Increase. The Bible says he will increase you more and more God wants you to increase not just financially but he wants you to increase in all areas of your life he wants you to increase in peace he wants you to increase in joy he wants you to increase in health he wants you to increase in wisdom but notice now he says the Lord will increase you more and more and one of the things that the Lord began to talk to me about is we have to get increase minded see many of us were decrease minded we're not increasing. My, man, I'm telling you, I'm thinking increase. Because that's what God is thinking. See, you and I have to come into agreement with God in terms of how he thinks about us. God wants you to increase. It is his will for you to increase. He doesn't want you to stay stagnant. He doesn't want you to remain in the same position. He wants you to increase. I'm increasing more and more. I'm increasing more and more. Say out loud, increase is my portion. Say it again, increase is my portion. Now turn over to Proverbs chapter 11 because I want you to see now, now how is it that God will increase us more and more? What is his, what is his method of operation? How will this increase take place in our life? Proverbs chapter 11. So we see that God wants to increase you. That is his, it's his will for you to increase. Amen. Praise God. I want the will of God in my life. Yes, if God wants me to increase, then that's what I'm going to do. Increase is his will. I'm not going to stay stagnant. I'm not going to remain in the same locations. I'm going to grow. I'm going to produce. I'm going to be fruitful. Yeah, I'm, and listen, I'm going to increase it financially too. My finances are increasing. Praise God. You ought to believe for increasing your finances. God wants to bless your finances. He wants to increase you more and more. Not just you, but your children. Amen. I'm believing God for generational wealth. The Bible said a good man. You, you were talking about, oh, he was a good man. Oh, my Lord, I tell you, so-and-so was a good man. Well, did he leave an inheritance? Because a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. How I many know you can't leave an inheritance if you don't have nothing to leave behind? So God wants you to increase more and more and more and more. Look at this. In uh, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 and 25, I'm going to read this out of the Amplified Translation. Notice what he says. There is one who generously scatters abroad and yet increases all the more. Oh boy, look at that. Now we just read, the Bible says God will increase you more and more. But notice how this increase 
takes place. He said, there is one who generously scatters abroad and yet increases all the more. And there is the one, so he's making a contrast between the one who's generous, the one who gives, and notice this person increases, and then he makes this contrast between the one who withholds what is justly due, but it results only in want and poverty. So notice now, the man who releases increases. The man who withholds decreases and it only leads to poverty and want. So if I hold to what I have, there'll be no increase. See, increase is the result of me being willing to release whatever I have in my hand. I cannot experience increase if I'm not willing to release. Say out loud, increase comes through releasing what I have. And this is important. This is important. And he goes on and he says in verse number 25, he says, the generous man or woman is a source of blessing and shall be prosperous and enriched. How many of you want to be prosperous and enriched? All right. Well, notice if you're going to be prosperous and if you're going to be enriched, then you have to be generous. Oh, my God. You have to learn to be generous. You've got to be a scatterer. You've got to be a scatterer. You've got to be one, amen, who releases, not one who holds on. Amen. So many people say, oh, I'm just going to hold on to what I have, and I'm believing God for more. Let me tell you, God can't get anything into a closed fist. If your fist is closed, nothing comes in and nothing goes out. But if you open it up and release something, then something can come back to you. Amen. Say amen to that. Say out loud, I'm a generous person. I scatter. And as a result, I increase more and more. I decree and declare because I am a generous person. Because I'm a source of blessing to others. I am prosperous and my life is enriched. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, as you give today, I want you to give with the expectation that the seed that you are releasing is going to cause an increase in every area of your life. Come on, let's give as unto the Lord and release our expectation for increase. says let the glory of the Lord rise among us let the favor and the peace and our breakthrough rise hallelujah thank you Lord let the glory of the Lord rise among us let the glory of the Lord Rise among us, let the praises of our King rise among us, let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us, let the glory of the Lord rise among us, and let the praises of our King rise among us, let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord.
Father, we thank you for the glory, the glory of your presence that fills this place. And we say, let your glory rise. Let the tide of your glory rise. Holy Spirit, we honor you today and we celebrate you and we welcome your presence. We thank you, Father, for the anointing that makes teaching easy. We thank you that the word of God will flow freely, unhindered and unchecked by any satanic or demonic force. Thank you that you will think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords. Thank you for giving me a mouth and wisdom that I speak as the oracles of God. And we thank you that all those who hear this word today will be blessed. They will be empowered. They will be empowered. They will be empowered. And their lives will never be the same. In Jesus' precious name. And all the people said, Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Praise team, musicians, we appreciate you. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to the book of Acts, chapter number one. The book of Acts, chapter number one. Today we're going to talk about the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. We've been sharing with you the importance of being a witness for Christ, the importance of sharing your faith and winning the loss. And so today I want to talk to you about the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Because without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, it is impossible to be an effective soul winner. You cannot win the loss without the power of the Holy Spirit. You have to be empowered. You have to be empowered. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Notice he said, but you shall receive power. You shall receive what? Power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So that means now, before the Holy Ghost comes upon you, there is no empowerment. It is only after the Holy Spirit comes upon you that you receive power or the ability to get results. Because that's what power is. Power is the ability to get results. How many of you want results in your Christian life? You don't want to just be a Christian. You want results. You want to get manifestation. You want to see things working in your life. See, the reason for many frustrations in life is because there are no results. We are trying to live this Christian life without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit. He empowers you to be fruitful. He empowers you to be productive. Notice he didn't say, after the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall speak in tongues. We know that's a part of the process, but that's not the purpose. Notice what he said you will receive. There will be an impartation of power or the ability to get results. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you have an ability that you did not have before. You have an ability that you did not have before. He empowers you to be a witness. Isn't that interesting? He said, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. And you shall be a witness. 
So what's the purpose of this power? So you can witness. See, many believers want power, but they don't witness. How in the world can you believe for power and you never share your faith? You never preach the gospel. See, you are ashamed of the gospel. Oh, you say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Let me help you. If you don't ever tell a sinner about Jesus, you are ashamed. Turn over to Romans chapter 1. And let me help you to understand, it is the gospel that possesses the power. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Hallelujah. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Oh, no, 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 no. Praise God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. See, if you're not preaching the gospel, if you're not telling the good news, what's the gospel? Good news. If you're not sharing good news with your neighbor, if you're not sharing good news with your family, if you're not sharing good news with your coworkers, then that means you're ashamed. Oh, that, that, no. don't look at me with that tone of voice. You are ashamed. You are ashamed because whatever you're not ashamed of, you will share it. Oh, hallelujah. Look what Paul says here in Romans chapter 1 verse 16. He says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. What is the power of God? The gospel. Say out loud. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. See, people cannot get saved if you don't preach the gospel. The Holy Spirit has empowered you to preach, not so you can just pray. You know, most of us would rather pray than, than preach because praying is much easier. All that praying you're doing. Oh, I spend three hours with God every day. Okay, for what? What, what, what? Why? God wants you to spend time with him to fill you so you can go and give away what he gives you. Oh, my Lord, I'm not going to get no help in here this morning. He has empowered you to bear fruit. Jesus said, I want you to bear fruit and I want your fruit to remain. Hallelujah. What kind of fruit do you have in your life? Who, who's been saved under your ministry? I showed you a few weeks ago, you have a ministry called the ministry of reconciliation. That means every one of you, it's not just those in the fivefold ministry. It's not just the apostles and the prophets and the evangelists and the teachers and the pastors responsibility to preach. No, you've been called to preach. You have a ministry to reconcile men back to God, to bring people back into right relationship with God. That's your ministry. You want to be some great evangelist, but you can't even witness to somebody at Walmart. You're afraid to share your faith, amen, with a family member you've known all your life, but yet you want to be some great prophetess, some great apostle. Come on now. No, it starts right here at Jerusalem. Look what he says back in Acts. Go back to the book of Acts. How are you going to go to the world when you can't even reach your neighborhood? Oh, I'm preaching better than you responded. He said, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witnesses both in Jerusalem. It starts in Jerusalem. It starts right there in your local sphere of influence. It starts in your home. It starts in your community. It starts in your city. It starts in your region. You've been empowered to be a witness. Say a lot. I've been empowered to be a witness. Hallelujah. Most of us don't witness. We're wasting the empowerment of God on our lives. God has invested power in you so that you can be a witness. That's your number one purpose for being a believer. Did you know that? Did you know that the number one reason God saved you is so that you can be his representative, so you can be his ambassador, so you can go and tell of his good news? He can't do it through nobody else but you. You're his mouthpiece. God depends on you to share his gospel with others. Oh, my Lord. 
Now, let's talk about some of the reasons real quickly for the Holy Ghost empowerment. Why does he empower us? Number one, he empowers you to preach the gospel. Go to Luke chapter number four. Luke chapter four. You've been empowered to preach. Not just to come to church and mark up your Bible in red and yellow and pink and blue. And have notebooks full of notes. No, baby. No, no, no. God has empowered you to preach the gospel. You know, when I got saved, I did not wait for somebody to, to endorse me as a preacher. In fact, listen, I'm telling you a true story. I am not exaggerating. I remember I would be on, in, on English Street, up by the food line. And I would go all the way down to, to English Village and Avalon and Bingham Park and all of those areas. Now, I was just a teenager. I didn't even have a license at the time. I wasn't no preacher. I just wanted to help people to hear the good news. And I would stand out there and witness to folks. I'm literally talking to people by myself. And I would say, hey, do you know Jesus loves you? He's got a plan for you. How can I pray for you today? I would spend hours doing that. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I would spend hours. And then there was a, a young guy at a school, at Page High School. His name was Dana. Me and Dana would get together. And I mean, we literally started Bible study. We would fast during our lunch period. Instead of eating lunch like all the high schoolers was eating lunch in the cafeteria, we would be outside in the, in the front reading the word and praying together. And all of a sudden, before we looked up, 25, 30, 40 students would be gathered around us. Come on. And we would be witnessing to them. And I mean, sometimes we would get late, be late going to class because we out there praying for folks and the bell done rang and we still praying, praying in tongues, laying hands on folks. I'm just in high school, Page High School. True story, no exaggeration. That was a hunger. I wanted to share the gospel. I wasn't ashamed. Too many of us are ashamed. We don't want people to know we're saved. Because we, I don't want to be too fanatical. I don't want to offend people. It's amazing, amazing. How Christians are so concerned about offending. But nobody's concerned about offending you. I've been empowered to preach the gospel. Look what he says here. In Luke chapter 4 verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Notice why. Because he hath anointed me or empowered me. That's what the anointing is. It's an empowerment. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. So notice here, Jesus is stating the purpose for the anointing in his life. The anointing is so that you can preach the gospel. To share the good news. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So number one, you've been empowered to preach the gospel. Say, I've been, I've been empowered to preach the gospel. Number two, the Holy Spirit empowers you to relieve the oppressed. Turn to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Acts 10, 38. Notice what the Bible says in verse 38 of Acts chapter 10. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Notice the Holy Ghost and power always go together. Because you can't have the Holy Ghost and not have power. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. So God empowers you so that you can relieve the oppressed. Those who have been oppressed financially. Those who have been oppressed spiritually. Those who have been oppressed mentally. Those who have been oppressed physically. You've been anointed to relieve those who are oppressed. Hallelujah. Say out loud, I'm empowered. To relieve the oppressed. So when people are in your presence that they are oppressed by satanic power, you've been empowered to relieve them. Number three, the third reason for the Holy Ghost empowerment is to prove that Jesus is the Son of God. See, how are you going to have proof that Jesus is the Son of God? What makes Jesus any different from Buddha? Mm. What makes Jesus any different from Mohammed? The empowerment. See, the only thing that separates us, Christians that is, from any other, and I, and I use this word for understanding purposes because Christianity is not a religion. That's what most people think. See, some of you think Christianity is a religion like, you know, Judaism and this and that. No, it's not. 
Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is divinity in humanity. Christianity is God taking up possession. Amen. Residing in someone physically. It is supernatural. Are you listening to me? In John chapter number 9. I'm going to tell you what makes the distinction between us and everyone else. It's the supernatural power of God. It's the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. See, that's what we have that none of these other religions have. We've been empowered. Hallelujah. Isn't that good news? Look what he says here in um, John's gospel, chapter 9, verse 5. As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. And when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said unto him, go wash in the pool of Shalom, which is by interpretation sent. And he went his way, therefore, and washed and came sin. He went his way, therefore, washed and came sin. Let's skip down to verse 35 for the sake of time. He says here in verse 35, Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said unto him, doest thou believe on the son of God? He answered and said, who is he, Lord, that I may believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, thou hast both seen him and it is he that talketh with thee. Now notice that um, this man became a believer because he encountered the power of God. His eyes were blind and now he could see. Amen. You know, when people were trying to say Jesus was a sinner, this man said, I don't know if he's a sinner or not. All I know is this man got power. He, I was blind, but now my eyes are open and I can see it. I believe that he's the son of God. You say what you want to say, but let me tell you, when people see the power of God, I don't care. They may not like you. They may not agree with your methods. Amen. But when they see demonstration and manifestation, they cannot argue. Hallelujah. You can't argue with a man that's walking in manifestation. How are you going to argue with somebody when they got demonstration in their life? You can't argue with proof. I said, you can't argue with proof. See, listen, when you walk in proof, you don't have to say much. Oh, my Lord, you arguing with those unbelieving family members about this and that? No, just have some demonstration, have some manifestation and just silence all the critics. Number four, here's the fourth reason for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. This is so good. To prove that Christ had risen from the dead. See, we've got to have proof that Christ is alive. We can't just say, oh, Jesus lives. Where's the evidence? Turn to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. Verse 12. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel you at this? Now, this is after, you know, Peter uh, raised the man up at the gate called Beautiful. He said, oh, why look ye so earnestly on us as through our own power of holiness we have made this man to walk. He goes on, verse 13, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, have glorified his son Jesus, whom you delivered up, denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the prince of life whom God has raised from the dead. Listen to this. Whereof we are witnesses. Isn't that good? He said, whereof we are witnesses. We are witnesses. And his name, verse 16, through faith in his name has made this man strong whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which is by him talking about Jesus, had given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. So we see here that the disciples understood the purpose for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit was to be a man evidence that Jesus had risen from the dead. This is how you know he's alive because the same things he did when he walked the streets of Palestine, he's doing it through us now. Praise God. Let me tell you something. Jesus' ministry did not end when he went to heaven. It still continues through me and you. That's why the Holy Spirit empowered you, so that you can continue his works in the earth. Number five. Here's the fifth reason for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. To attract people's attention to the gospel. To attract people's attention to the gospel. Why is it that people have lost interest in the church? Because the church has become powerless. We become political and not powerful. We're more concerned about politics than we are about, amen, the power of God transforming lives. 
See, we got to get back to the purpose of your Christianity. Why did God save you? Why did he empower you? So that you can be a witness. So that men and women can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ is the king. That he is the son of the living God. Look at John's gospel chapter 6 here. And um, verse number 2. And a great multitude followed him. Notice why they followed him. Look at the reason. Because they saw his miracles which he did on them that were diseased. Hallelujah. See multitudes will follow you when they see the great things that God will do through you. Look at Luke chapter 5. St. Luke chapter 5. St. Luke chapter 5. See, when you have God's empowerment through the Holy Spirit, people will believe. People will believe. They will be attracted to the gospel. They will be attracted to the gospel. Luke chapter 5 verse 15. But so much the more went their fame abroad of him, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. Now, this is because the power of God was manifest in his life. The power of God was manifest in his life. See? Number six. Here's the sixth reason for the purpose of the Holy Spirit's empowerment. To make people believe the gospel and turn to God. To make people believe the gospel and turn to God. How will people believe the gospel when they see the God's power? When they see the manifestation and demonstration of power? They're not going to just believe it because you preach it, just because you say it. They're going to believe it when they see the evidence of this gospel. We need evidence. We need to see the power of God in operation. That's why I refuse just to be someone who teach on healing and not demonstrate it. Amen. 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 You shared your testimony. I got your, your testimony back there. You know, last Monday night, Tuesday night, whatever night it was, the Lord gave me a word of knowledge about somebody's eye being healed. And all of a sudden, you said, the pain began to leave. Huh? Did you share yet? power of God. Testimonies are always coming in. People are always in boxes and saying, oh my God, when, when you prayed, when you released that word of knowledge, healing flowed in my life. The pain left. Went back to the doctor and they can't find a trace of a thing. See, that's a demonstration. That's just not somebody standing up here talking and teaching. We don't need a bunch of talk. We need the power of God to be manifested. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time for manifestation. Say it's time for some demonstration. Nobody's going to be convinced because of your teaching and your talking. People will believe when they see the glory of God. When they see the power of God in manifestation. In Acts chapter number 8. It's time for power to be manifested. We got all these great theologians. Everybody's talking about what God can do, but nobody's demonstrating it. Whew. Well, God can heal. Well, where's the healing at? God can deliver. Well, who's getting delivered? God can prosper. Well, why are you still broke? Don't look at me with that tone of voice. Amen. If we're going to preach this gospel, we ought to live it. There ought to be some signs. There ought to be some manifestation. There ought to be some demonstration. There ought to be some results. I'm looking for results. I don't want to just talk the talk. I want to walk the walk. Glory to God. I want, I want the living proof of God in my life. Time out for you just having the Christian t-shirt and the bumper sticker. It's time for some signs to follow you. Oh, glory to God. Am I preaching to a church that's ready to be demonstrators of the glory of God? Or are you just going to keep on talking? Man, I tell you what, if some of us got arrested for being a Christian, they would have to let us go for a lack of evidence. They said, you don't have no evidence that you're a Christian. Get on out of this jail cell. Look at this in Acts chapter number 8, verse 6. Praise God forevermore. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake. Notice why they gave heed. Notice why they were listening to Philip. Notice the Bible said with one accord they gave heed. They gave heed. They were, they were intent about listening to him. Why? Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. 
Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did for unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with uh, palsies and, and were lame. They were healed. And notice this. And there was great joy in the city of Greensboro. You, you're talking about joy hitting the city when miracle signs and wonders begin to flow through you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Great joy. In verse 12, look what the Bible said in verse 12. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. See, they came to Christ. Their lives were changed because Philip didn't just have a sermon. He had power. He had demonstration. Number seven. Here's the seventh reason for Holy Ghost empowerment. Empowerment. The seventh reason for Holy Ghost empowerment. Number seven. To bring glory to God. To what? Not to bring glory to yourself, but to bring glory to God. See, if you really want to bring glory to God, then you need to walk in power. Mark chapter 2 verse 12. Look what the Bible says here. The gospel according to St. Mark chapter 2 verse 12. And immediately, and immediately, he rose up. He rose rather, took up the bed and went forth before them all in so much that they were all amazed and glorified God saying we never saw it on this fashion. This is the palsy man, the man with palsy, this man who was crippled, this man who, amen, was paralyzed, who had paralysis and um, amen, he, he, couldn't, he couldn't walk and the Bible says here that this man was healed. Jesus healed the man. This man was on his sick bed. He was on a bed. He was on a bed. He was laid out, couldn't move, couldn't walk. And Jesus healed him and said, get up and walk. Hallelujah. And notice this miracle brought glory to God. Let me tell you something. When people see the power of God in operation through you, they will begin to glorify God. They will begin to give God the glory. You want to see people really give glory to God? Let his power be on display. Turn over to Acts chapter 4. I'm going to keep preaching this to somebody get a hold of it and start manifesting. It's time for you to manifest. Refuse to be a powerless Christian. Quit playing church. Get in the presence of God and say, Holy Ghost, you have empowered me. Now work through me. Use me however you want to. I'm available. Praise God. I said, praise God. Look at this. Acts chapter 4. Verse 21. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them. Because of the people. Notice why. For all men glorified God for that which was done. Now you know what happened prior to this. This man at the gate called Beautiful who was lame from his mother's womb. Peter and John was going to the temple to pray. And they saw this man and they healed him. They said, get up. Get up. Get up and walk. And because this man was healed, the people glorified God. They said, oh, what a great miracle. What a great miracle of God on display. See, I'm telling you, miracles bring glory to God. Say out loud, miracles bring glory to God. See, until Christ was empowered, he could not attract the multitudes. He could not attract the multitudes. The crowd only followed him after the empowerment. After the empowerment. Go to Luke. Luke chapter number 4. In fact, let's write this down. I don't have time to read these scriptures. Luke chapter 4 verses 1 and 2. Luke chapter 4 verses 1 and 2. Also Luke chapter 4 verse 14. Verse 36 through 37. And verse 42. I'll give it to you again. All of this in Luke, Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4 verses 1 and 2. Verse 14, verse 36 and 37, and verse 42. Now, after Jesus ascended, after his ascension, after the ascension of Jesus, the gathering of the crowds ceased. They stopped until there was an empowerment upon the disciples by the Holy Spirit. See, when Jesus descended, ascended back into heaven, the crowds stopped attending. But the moment the empowerment of the Spirit came on the disciples, the crowd gathered back again. Oh, yes. See, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of harvest. To ignore him is to live in barrenness. 
The Holy Spirit is the spirit of harvest. He is the spirit of harvest. He knows how to bring the harvest in. He knows how to gather the souls in. Look at this scripture here in Matthew chapter number three. Oh, this is so good. Matthew chapter three. Matthew chapter three. Matthew chapter three. Are you getting this? Look at verse 12. Whose fan is in his hand. He will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. The word garner means gathering something into storage. So the Holy Ghost, here's what he does. He gathers souls for preservation. He gathers souls for preservation. Oh, my Lord. See, these are the reasons for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Let me make sure you have them. Number one, to preach the gospel. Number two, to relieve the oppressed. Number three, to prove that Jesus is the Son of God. Number four, to prove that Christ had risen from the dead. Number five, to attract people's attention to the gospel. Number six, to make people believe the gospel and turn to God. Number seven, to bring glory to God. These are the reasons for the Holy Spirit's empowerment. Now, for the sake of time, let me share at least two. I have about ten to give you, but I'll share at least two with you. I want to talk about real quickly how the Holy Spirit empowers the believer for soul winner winning. How does he empower you to win souls? Number one, he empowers you when he teaches you. He teaches you. The Holy Spirit teaches you. Write down this scripture, John chapter 14, verse 26. That's the scripture reference. The Holy Spirit teaches you. The Holy Spirit will teach you all things, including how to be a good soul winner. You need to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, teach me how to win souls. Teach me how to be a witness. It was the Holy Spirit, for example, that taught Philip how to go about preaching to the Ethiopian eunuch. Okay, turn over to the book of Acts chapter number 8. The Holy Spirit taught Philip how to do this. See, the Holy Spirit will teach you. Somebody said, I don't know. I just don't know what to say, and I don't know what to do, and I don't have a strategy. You don't need none of those things. All you got to do is rely on the Holy Spirit. All you got to do is say, Holy Spirit, teach me how to be a witness. Teach me how to win the loss. Teach me how to reach out to sinners, and he will teach you. Do you know the Holy Spirit is a teacher? He empowers you through teaching you. I said he empowers you through teaching you. See, when the Holy Spirit teaches you, he empowers you. That's why I'm so grateful for the teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit. Oh, my God. The teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit is the most valuable ministry I have in my life. He teaches me. Marquez, he's a teacher. Every day I am enrolled in the school of the Holy Spirit. I am sitting at the table of the Spirit of God. I am at the feet saying, Holy Ghost, teach me what I need to know. Teach me what I need to know. Teach me how to be a witness. Teach me how to be a leader. Teach me how to be an example. Teach me how to be a good husband, faithful husband, a faithful father. Teach me. You know, I, I depend on the Holy Spirit. I look to the Holy Spirit. He is the one who teaches me. Teach me how to be a man of God, a man of integrity, a man, a man that you're pleased with. I depend on him. Somebody says, oh, you know what? I just appreciate the man you are. And I just say, thank you. But I'm telling you, I would be nothing without the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He's the one who teaches me all things. I am what I am because of him. Everything I ever be is because of the Holy Spirit. It's him. Hallelujah. See, you have to be teachable. You can't think you know it all. Some of you are too smart for your own pants, as my grandmother used to say. You're a smarty pants. You're too smart for your own good. You think you know everything. You don't look at your neighbor and say, you don't know it all. You really don't. You don't know it all. You need to learn how to listen to the Holy Ghost. He'll teach you how to do some things. He'll show you some things. He'll help you to get out of some things. He'll show you how to be the man or the woman of God you are supposed to be. But you're trying to follow somebody online. And copy somebody else. Because you think that's, that's, what a, that's what a woman of God should be. No, you better let the Holy Ghost teach you. Amen. Look at this. All right. Let me hurry up. I'm almost done. In Acts chapter 8, verse 29. Look what the Bible says. The Holy Ghost is going to teach you some things. Look what the Bible said. Then the Spirit said unto Philip. 
Notice the Holy Spirit said to Philip, go near, join thyself to this chair. Do you know the Holy Spirit can tell you where to go and who to minister to? If you'll just get quiet and, and be sensitive, he'll show you. He'll say, go to the store. i never forget, I told you, one day I was at home praying, and the Holy Spirit told me to go uh, to KNW. And I said, I don't want to go to no KNW. I ain't got no take for no KNW. At that time, I, was, I wasn't even eating KNW. KNW, they had fallen off in my pain. I said, man, I ain't no going to KNW. The Holy Spirit said, go to KNW. I said, what am I going for? And I just went to KNW. I never forget it. I went to KNW. And I went in and I went down the thing. I looked at the food. I said, I don't see nothing here I want. And I was getting ready to go back out. The Holy Spirit said, just stay here. I sat there for a while, for about 10 minutes. A big bus poured up. Like a Graham bus. You know? People were traveling. And uh, it was a holiday. One of those holiday buses, you know? And I went outside and people started getting off. And they were coming in to eat. And I was just watching them get off. Watching them get off. And I saw a lady, older lady. Holy Spirit said, this is why I sent you here for this woman. So I want you to pray for her, minister to her. And, and I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to say? This lady, a stranger, they from up north somewhere traveling down. This lady trying to get her some care and W and eat. And I'm getting ready to talk to her about the Holy Ghost and about prayer. And I just walked up to her and said a couple words to her. And I said, do you mind if I pray for you? And she said, sweetie, oh, no, I wouldn't mind at all. In fact, I've been having some troubles here. I just ministered to her, praise God. And before you knew it, that woman was excited and joyful, filled with the Lord. She was like, oh, thank you so much, baby, for praying. Can I give you a hug? I said, sure you can, mama. And she hugged me and kissed me on the cheek. And I'm getting ready to go. And did you know before I can leave, there were other people saying, hey, can you pray for me? Just listening. See, the Holy Spirit told Philip. The Holy Spirit told Philip. Look at this. The Spirit said to Philip, Go near and join yourself to this chair. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I accept a man except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Amen. And the place of the scripture which he read was this, and he was led as a sheep to the slaughter, like a dumb, like a lamb dumb before his shearers, so he opened out his mouth. And, 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 and the, the moral of the story, if you keep reading, is this man ended up getting baptized and uh, getting saved because the Spirit told Philip where to go. The, Philip, the Spirit told Philip how to go minister. Let me tell you, the Spirit will tell you how to minister to those who are not saved. One, one last point I make. Number two. Number two. Number two. So number one, the thing that the Holy Spirit does to empower you to be a soul winner is he teaches you. Right? Everybody got that? He teaches you. Number two, he convicts sinners. See, it's not your job to convict people. Some of us try to preach to people to make them feel guilty to convict them. That ain't your job. You're not the one who convicts. You just preach. The Holy Ghost will convict them. Turn to the book of Acts chapter 2. Quit trying to convict people when you preach. You're trying to convict them so they can change. No, your job is just to preach. Your job is to share the good news, the gospel. It's the Holy Spirit's job to convict their hearts. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Amen. Notice the Bible says in verse 37 of Acts chapter 2, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? So after Peter preached this mighty message, after he shared the gospel, the Holy Ghost pricked their hearts. See, while you are preaching, the Holy Spirit is right there with you convicting the sinner. Making the sinner realize his or her uh, sinful state, thereby acknowledging their need for salvation. That's what the Holy Spirit does. You have an invisible partner who's standing with you. 
He's ministering with you. He's partnering with you, glory to God, as you go and share the gospel. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to think that you're doing it alone. No, as you open up your mouth and share your own personal testimony of what God has done in your life and how God has changed your life and, amen, the growth that you've experienced. As you are talking, the Holy Spirit is right there. He's ministering through you and he's ministering with you. And he's the one touching the hearts of people. He's the one transforming people's hearts and minds. And people are being convicted. And and they say, I don't know why I feel so bad. I just need to give Christ my life. I, 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 please, can you pray for me? See? But that never happens if you are not willing to be a vessel. If you're not willing to share. See? You understand what I'm saying? Now, it's important because this is your purpose. This is how you fulfill your destiny. You'll never fulfill your destiny if you don't utilize the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Did you get this message today? Come on, give God a praise offer right now. Let's thank God for the word. Hallelujah. Come on, let's thank God for the word. Now, you have to be a person that's teachable. You have to be a person that, that is open to the ministry of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit has given you everything you need. Don't you think for one second that you don't have what it takes. That you don't have the power of God in you. If you're born again, you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You have His power in you. All you got to do is let that power flow through you. Let the power of God flow through you. Today there's somebody watching me right now. You're not born again. You don't know Christ as your Savior. You've never asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. You know about God, but you don't know God intimately. You don't have a personal relationship with Christ. I want to pray for you right now. Listen, it's not hard. It's not complicated. Religion has made salvation complicated because religion focuses on all the do's and don'ts and all the things you got to do in order to be saved. No, I've only found one requirement for salvation. Just one. Just one. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved that's it will you call upon his name today he's the savior he has a plan he has a purpose he has a man a destiny for you all you have to do is believe believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord what does that mean practically speaking just confess Jesus Christ is Lord won't you say this after me say Lord Jesus I confess with my mouth I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. Today, I repent of my sins. I change my mind about my past ways of doing things. And today, I ask Jesus to come into my heart. I receive him as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you. Oh, thank you for loving me, forgiving me, and accepting me. Today, I'm saved. My name has been written down in the Lamb's book of life. I have passed from darkness to life. Yes, today. Right now, at this moment, Jesus is my Savior. And for the rest of my life, I will serve Him. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, let me say welcome to the family of God. We are excited about your new beginning your new beginning call that number right now on the screen let our prayer partners know you've just received Christ as your savior we want to send out some material to you that's going to help you to grow in your faith and to strengthen your relationship with God now now that you're born again now that you're saved it's important that you get into a Bible-based church that's right you need to get connected to a Bible-based church amen a church that teaches the Word of God if you'd like more information about Abundant Life and how you could possibly connect with us through membership or through partnership, amen, go to edwardkirkpatrick.org. On our website, you'll see the information there on how you can become a member of this church. We would love to have you to be a partner with our church. Come on, let's thank God for our new members, those who are joining, amen, those who are making a decision to be a part of this family. Amen. God bless you again to each of you. Listen, take the notes that you've received. Don't just take these notes and read over them and say, praise the Lord. Yes, amen, amen, praise God. No, practice them. Put them into practice. Begin to witness. And as you do, watch the power of God begin to work through you in greater dimensions. Stand to your feet. Let's go. Hallelujah. Were you blessed today? 
my, 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 my. I'm telling you, God is wanting to manifest himself in your life more than you ever could imagine. He wants to do some things in your life more than you ever could imagine. I just sense in my spirit, even now, to this young lady that's standing here, amen, God bless you. I don't, you know, I can't recognize folks through masks and all that good stuff. But as I look at you, I heard the Holy Spirit say, tell my daughter that I am visiting her home and there is a fresh level of peace that is getting ready to envelop her life. Let her know that all is well. God is working all things together for your good. Get ready because this next season of your life is going to be a very productive one. A very productive one. You're going to see some things like you've never seen. God is getting ready to open up doors of opportunity. And I just see some amazing things over the next 90 days. Some amazing things are getting ready to manifest in your life. And I see God restoring to you things the canker worm and the caterpillar have eaten up. And things that have happened even in years gone by. God said to also tell you, don't forget about those dreams I put in your heart. See, sometimes we can forget about things because it's been on delay. And just because it's been delayed doesn't mean it's been denied. Get Get ready for your manifestation. This is your new season and doors of opportunity are opening and you're getting ready to walk through them. And I see great joy coming to your life. I see you rejoicing in the spirit. Amen. God says your joy. And you remember that movie when Stella got a groove back? You're getting ready to get your groove back. You're going to get your joy back. Hallelujah. Get ready to walk in it. It's already done. Somebody give God a praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we thank you and we give you glory and we praise you for the word of God today. We thank you for what you've done and what you're doing. We thank you, Father God, that you've empowered us by the Holy Spirit to be witnesses. And Lord, we thank you for the Holy Spirit who teaches us and who leads us and guides us. And we depend upon the Holy Spirit. We look to you, Holy Spirit, to show us how to be witnesses for the glory of God. Now, Father, as we leave this place, we don't leave your presence. Thank you that your angels are encamped around about us to keep us, to protect us, and to preserve us. In Jesus' precious name, and all the people of God said, amen and amen. God bless you. Make it a great, great, great week. And don't forget, go by the bookstore, get a hold of this teaching. Amen. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God bless you.